morning year four and thank you for joining me this is lesson eight of the the writing lessons so your learning objective today is to use a variety of sentence openers now by sentence openers i mean use lots of different ways of starting your sentences so your success criteria is i want you to start your sentences using fronted adverbials and that can be fronted adverbials of time manner place or reason and you're very good at doing these so this shouldn't be a problem um, i also want you to use ing clauses at the beginning of your sentences so this is new learning and i will explain this more basically ing clauses are words like if you look in the brackets the example is flying through the sky toothless searched for food so it's also a, an adverbial fronted adverbial so ing clauses although we haven't done this in class before it's just an another way of writing fronted adverbials so flying through the sky it's it's the action that he's doing um so the word flying can you see how it ends with the ing suffix so we call this um, an ing clause so flying through the sky that comma is very important toothless search for food so you will be using some ing clauses in your writing today. And lastly, I want you to use some ed words. So ed words, your third type of sentence opener, basically are, are just adjectives with the suffix suffix ed. So um, you can start a sentence with exhausted, for example. Exhausted. And see how the word exhausted, it's an adjective, isn't it? It describes... Um, a feeling um, so how exhausted has the suffix ed at the end you can think of lots of adjectives that have ed at the end and that's how we will start the sentence describing how the character feels so exhausted comma uh, toothless sat down okay don't worry if it doesn't make sense right now we will go through this in more detail right now okay so today we are writing the second paragraph of our innovative text. And if you recall from Friday when we wrote the first paragraph, we are writing the story from the perspective of toothless. Okay? So if we look at the boxing up grid, we, on, in the second paragraph, these are the things that we need to include. We need to, uh, the paragraph, the content is basically the build up. I've just listed them here. So by build up, I mean the, the main character, so Toothless, has to get ready to go somewhere. And then um, as for language features, according to the, the learning objective, we're going to focus in this paragraph on a, using a variety of sentence starters, including fronted adverbials, the ing clauses, and the ed words. So these three types of sentence starters is what we're going to focus on today. So on the screen you can see the second paragraph from the model text. Now I want you to identify in when I read this out loud the build up that it's building up um, the storyline, it's building up the excitement for something to go wrong. Remember the third paragraph is when we write the uh, problem so this is the build up to that problem and you can see that the, the main character in here Hiccup is getting ready to go somewhere and um, the last thing here, various sentence openers, is what I want you to identify later on. So just listen to me reading the paragraph and um, familiar, familiarize yourself with the content. Leaping out of bed, Hiccup glanced outside the window. On the streets below, the villagers were rushing around merrily, putting up bunting and other decorations in preparation for the annual dragon parade. Hiccup couldn't believe he had forgotten what day it was. He loved the dragon parade. It was the best day of the year. Hastily, Hiccup got dressed and ate his breakfast. Then he grabbed his dad's hand, waved his mum goodbye and walked out of the door. Excited, Hiccup stepped out into the street and headed towards the parade. I've just noticed this should really... Oops, that's not really good. It's meant to be a comma, guys. There should be a comma there after then. Okay, so that was the model text, the second paragraph. And let's have a look at what I want you to do with it. And before we get writing, just have a look at this paragraph and tell me how can we improve it? 
So bear in mind our learning objective is to use a variety of sentence openers. So in this paragraph we have, I will read it out loud to you, Toothless searched high and low for some food, but there was none to be found. Toothless's belly rumbled and he felt faint. Toothless really needed to eat something soon. Toothless could hear people rushing around merrily in a nearby town. Toothless could tell something special was going on. Toothless spread his mighty wings and swooped into the crowd. Now, although we are speaking from Toothless's perspective, is this a very good paragraph? What do you think? Hopefully you will recognize that this is not a very, in fact, I'm, I'm really bored. I, I think you would be bored listening to that. It's boring because we've used the same sentence opener. Every sentence starts with the, the character's name, toothless, toothless, toothless. And it just doesn't sound very exciting. So please do not use the character's name to start every sentence. I will read this paragraph and you tell me, is it any better? So this time we've got, Toothless searched high and low for some food, but there was none to be found. His belly rumbled and he felt faint. He really needed to eat something soon. He could hear people rushing around merrily in a nearby town. He could tell something special was going on. He spread his mighty wings and swooped into the crowd. Well, hopefully you've realized that actually, although here we've got toothless, and then the second sentence starts with his, and then the rest start with he, this is still not effective, it's still not good enough, it still sounds quite boring. So please do not start every sentence with a pronoun, the noun, his name, and a pronoun, his, he, his, he, they. It's still, this is not what we classify as a variety of sentence openers, it's still just a pronoun. So we don't want to do this in today's writing either. So why should we start our sentences with a variety of openers, with lots of different sentence openers? Well, the first and foremost reason is because your story will sound more interesting if you start it, if you use different language features and starting a sentence in different ways. Not only does, the, does it make the reader want to read the story because it's, it's exciting and it's enjoyable, also it's a chance for you as a writer to uh, showcase, show off how, uh, how much you understand and how many different uh, openers you can use. So when you write today's um, second paragraph, when you innovate in a while, I really want you to sh show off to me and say, look, miss, how many variety, um, what, how many openers I can use. So really try your best to include as many as you can. Now, in a while, I would like you to skim read paragraph two of the model text. You can find it in your packs or it's here on the screen for you. And I want you to have a look. How many different types of openers have I used? And what are they? You can either underline them or jot them down on your whiteboard or in your home learning book. So pause this video and have a look. How many different types of openers have I used? This is what you should have identified. So we've got leaping out of bed, which is in green. And again, that is an ing starter. Then we've got on the streets below, the next green writing. So on the streets below, on the streets below is a fronted adverbial. We just write FA for short. It's a fronted adverbial of place. And then, in red, we have a sentence that starts with hiccup, which is a proper noun. And then we have another sentence starts with the pronoun he. And then we have in green, uh, the word hastily. Remember hastily means quickly in, like, in he's doing it in a rush. So hastily, it is an adverb. It is a, it is a fronted adverbial as, as is leaping out of bed. Ing starters are also fronted adverbials. So hastily, um, we can call it an ly word to make it easier to distinguish to differentiate from fronted adverbial and then we've got um, a time conjunction then and then we've got sentence starter excited which is the ed word so we've got lots of different sentence starters now children you are all very very good at writing um, nouns and pronouns and you're good at uh, conjunctions uh, of time. 
So here in Purple I've written, you're very good at starting sentences with the red openers. So today we are going to practice using the green ones. So now that we know what to do, let's um, innovate this second paragraph. So you can see the model text second paragraph on the screen. And the green bits is what I want you to focus on today. The different types of openers, the ing clause, the fronted adverbial, the ly word, and the ed word. So try and focus on those four things. Orange and green group, I hope you're paying attention because you need to do this like I'm doing. Uh, blue and green group, uh, blue and red, sorry, I've got some um, uh, worksheets to help you with this. Okay, so let me just select my pen. Remember, we were writing from Toothless's perspective, so it's not, nothing to do with Hiccup now. We're talking about what Toothless is doing. So we've got leaping out of bed, Hiccup glanced outside the window. Now, I, I need to choose an ing starter. What is Toothless doing? Remember, in the first paragraph, he said, I'll go find my own breakfast. So he's off um, to, to find some food. Think of dragons. How do they search for things. Well, they fly, don't they? So you can have, um, I don't, you can start with flying through the sky. Flying through the sky. You must remember the comma. And then we're talking about toothless. Toothless. We're not going to we're not going to have toothless glancing out of a window. That doesn't even make sense in our innovation. So you can say toothless mm, searched for some food. Searched for some food. What else could we have instead of flying through the sky? We could have, think of a word that, be, that think of a, an action that dragons do that ends with the suffix ing. So you could have um, soaring uh, through through the sky. Okay, so it's up to you. You pick whatever you like. If you're unsure, you can magpie, magpie flying or soaring. Um, and then let's move on. On the streets below. So this is a fronted adverbial. The villagers were rushing around merrily. Um, so instead of because he's not actually there. Toothless isn't actually there. So we could say, think of a, a fronted adverbial where we're saying the villagers were rushing around merrily. So Toothless could see people rushing around merrily. Okay, because he's not part of the dragon parade, is he? He just he crushes it. So think thinking of a fronted adverbial, I'll do it in a different colour just to make it easier for you. You could have in the distance, Toothless could hear people rushing around merrily, or you could have in a nearby town. I'm just making it up. In a nearby town. Again, please remember the comma after your fronted adverbials. Um, in a nearby town, okay, I'm just going to do T, if you don't mind, T for toothless. Toothless could hear, um, and then we, we can copy the rest of that paragraph. Toothless could hear villagers or we wouldn't have were villagers rushing around merrily. Okay, the rest, the black writing on the screen, I don't mind if you condense it. I'm only focused on your the green writing today, but don't just do different um, sentence starters. You do need some meat on those bones. You do need extra details. So in a nearby town, comma, toothless could hear uh, people rushing around merrily. Okay. So we've got our fronted adverbial. The next one, remember we're not doing the red ones. You don't need to focus on those. We need to think of an L-Y word. Now, we could do hastily, but of course we're not talking about hiccup. We're doing toothless. So toothless could probably be, um, what do you do? Toothless spread his wings and swooped down on the on the crowds so we could have that so how does he spread his wings we could have um maybe mightily 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 which means with great strength mightily toothless spread his wings Whooped 
down on the crowd. I'm not going to write all of it. Unfortunately, on this screen, I don't have space to write the whole sentences. Instead of mightily, you could have... Oh, how else might he spread his wings? Um, quickly, Tutla spread his wings. Scarily, uh, Tutla spread his wings. So pick an L-Y word that will fit there, that will be um, effective in that sentence. We're not going to do then. Um, let's think of an ED word. <clears throat> right, so in, in the model text it says excited, hiccup stepped out onto the street. So now we want toothless to go towards the food stalls, remember? Because then he crashes, that's the problem that he can't control his flying and he crashes and then he has food slop all over his face, if you recall that from the model text. So in the last paragraph, remember what I said before, children, you need to think about each paragraph and make sure the storyline flows. So we know we want Toothless to crash into the food store. So it needs to be a word. How is how is how is Toothless feeling before he crashes into the or or he we don't want him to crash yet, that's the problem. We want him to head towards is going towards the food store. And we know from paragraph one, he hasn't eaten, there's no food, so he's hungry. We can't use hungrily because that's an L-Y word. What E-D word can we think of that means hungry? You could have famished. Sorry about that. Famished. Oh, I'm going to rub that out because it's not written very clearly. And like I always say to you, Please make your writing legible so I can read it, and I haven't done that, so I'm going to rewrite that. You can have the word famished. Famished means really hungry. I sometimes say to my family, I'm famished, what's for lunch today? So famished, and remember with ED words, the comma is not after the clause, this is different. The comma goes after the word, the ED word. So famished, um, toothless, headed towards the food store. That makes sense because he's hungry. He wants to go straight to the food stalls. He doesn't want to mingle with Hiccup and his dad and all the crowds. He just wants to eat. Is there another word with ED word that you could have? You could have um, starved. That has an ED at the end. You could have starved, comma, toothless, headed towards the food stalls. You could even have exhausted comma toothless headed toward the food stalls or um, tired comma toothless headed towards the food stalls all those words have ed at the end so what i would like you to do um is just pause the video now and just have a think about which ing starter fronted adverbial ly word and ed word that you could use. So this is green and, and orange group. Just have a think. On the next slide, I will show you my second innovated paragraph. But please be mindful, I do not want you to copy it exactly. So I've just modeled the thought process, how you can think of your own starters. But do take a look at mine now on the next slide. I'll read it out to you. Right, so here's my completed innovation second paragraph and you can see in blue I've got an ing starter, a fronted adverbial, an ly word and an ed word. So four different types of starters that I would like you to, to do as many as possible as, as much as you can as well. Let me read this paragraph to you. Soaring through the sky, Toothless searched high and low for some food but there was none to be found. His belly rumbled and he felt faint. He really needed to eat something soon. In a nearby town, Toothless could hear people rushing around merrily. Something special was going on. The sweet scent of freshly baked bread wafted through the air. Maybe it was a party. Quickly, Toothless spread his mighty wings and swooped into the crowds. Famished, he headed straight towards the food store. And that's it. So, like I said, the black writing here is the meat on the bone. So, you, it is an adventure story. So, please do make it exciting and add 
a little bit more than just starters. It's kind of an interesting paragraph or an interesting story as with just starters. You need to add something else. So what I wanted you, what I want you to do is um, find the sheets on Seesaw allocated to your own group. So red group and blue group, um, the sheet that you will have, I've given you some ideas. I want you to copy it into your home learning book and upload it onto Seesaw. Green and orange group, I have also given you some examples of different um, starters, so use that, but write the whole second paragraph into your home learning books and upload them on Seesaw. Um, don't stop the video just yet. I've got one more slide that I would like you to do because I want you to be independent learners and I want you to be in charge of your own writing. So just take a look at the next slide. Okay, so we have some self-assessment. That means when you've finished writing your story, just to check, sorry, to fin when you finish writing your second paragraph, just check that you've done what uh, you've been asked and whether you've met the um, LO. So I want you to, number one, read your work out loud, hear it, does it make sense? Have you missed any words out? Um, number two, just count how many different openers did you use? Remember, the goal is four different types. Uh, some of you may have ha ha used more. I'd be very intrigued to see that. I want you to underline the fronted adverbial using your green pen. Um, so your in clauses and your ED words and your LY word as well. It's not actually written there because it's an example of a fronted adverbial, but um, yeah, do the LY word as well. In fact, I will add it right now. And the LY word. Oh, that looks like LG. I'm very, very sorry. LY word. And then red group. Can you tell me how many fronted adverbials you've used? Underline them. Then I want you to number three, check your punctuation, guys. Check whether the comma is after the fronted adverbial, it's after the ing clause, and in the ed word, if the comma is after the ed word. Okay, so there's some examples in the brackets. And number four, very, very importantly, I want you to upload your writing on Seesaw. You can see with my writing, with that LG, LY word, it's very hard to write on the screen. I have a pen, you guys need to use your finger to write on Seesaw. So that's why I would prefer if you wrote the paragraph into your home learning books, take a photograph of it and upload it onto Seesaw. I, I, it's a lot easier for me to mark then. So enjoy that. Go find your worksheets now, your um, tasks, and try your absolute best. Looking forward to reading your paragraphs. See you later. Bye.